Hi, this is Ken of Wrist Innovations, and I have nine upgrades for your Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and AMS Lite Combo 3D Printer. These upgrades are my original design, so you won't see them anywhere else. So let's get started. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is how much space the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini with the AMS Lite take up on your table. The physical footprint of just the A1 is 15 inches wide by 21 inches deep by 17 inches high. When you include the AMS Lite, the overall footprint balloons 25 inches wide by 21 inches deep by 18 inches high. By comparison, the X1 carbon footprint is 15 inches wide by 21 inches deep by 28 inches high. So it takes 40% less footprint but it has a 65% larger print volume. Also, because the A1 and the AMS Lite are connected by the tubing and the electrical cord, it's a major hassle to move the units around without having to disconnect them from each other. So, here's how I solved that problem. Number one, this is the inverted AMS Lite frame system. I used standard length 20 millimeter square aluminum extrusions, and I built this frame or skeleton to be able to secure the A1 Mini down below, and I turned the AMS light upside down and mounted it on top of the A1 Mini. I mounted the AMS light to the frame using these U-bolts, and I 3D printed some cushions from TPU material. This holds the AMS light very securely to the frame. Also, I added this one meter electrical cable and male to male adapter because the AMS light cable is too short to connect to the A1 Mini. I also 3D printed these anti-vibration feet out of TPU that just slip onto the bottom of the four legs of the extrusions. I 3D printed these locator plates to hold the A1 Mini securely to the frame. Besides taking up less of a footprint, the frame makes it much easier to move the A1 Mini and the AMS Lite together. Also, by having the AMS Lite upside down, it's much easier to see what you're doing when you're loading the filament into the AMS Lite. When it's in its normal position, you have to blindly try to feed the filament into the opening. And sometimes people have commented that they accidentally insert the filament into the wrong space. The frame is very stable and it's not top heavy at all. But I'm not a miracle worker here, and I couldn't magically shrink the A1 AMS light to the X1 carbon size. But for me, this is a major improvement. Also, I have information at the end of the video on where you can get all the materials and how you can get the instruction manual and all of the STL files of the 3D printed parts that are in this video. I would like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. If you are working on any prototype projects, they can help you when you need a variety of parts. Besides making PCBs, they also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and lots of different types of 3D printing, including metal printing. Just go on their website, upload your design, select the material and quantity, and you will get an instant quote. They'll manufacture your parts and ship them right to your door. Give them a try and I think you'll really be amazed at what they can do for you. Check out PCB Way using the link below. So now let's talk about some of the other upgrades that are part of this ecosystem. Number two is the poop bucket. Every time the printer starts a print, it purges the filament as well as every time a color change is made on a multicolor print. So the printer creates a lot of waste. I'm still a bit surprised that Bamboo Lab made a clever filament purge feature, but it didn't provide a solution on how to contain all of these little blobs of waste filament or poop. The waste filament just gets flung out away from the printer and it goes everywhere. You definitely need to be careful if you have small children or pets because these plastic blobs could be a choking hazard. I definitely wanted to contain the filament poop, so I designed this integrated poop bucket and chute combo that easily slips in and out of the frame system using these finger pulls. When you install it, it just sits flat on the table and it's held in place by the A1 locator plates. The poop bucket is 3D printed in two pieces and I just hold them together with a few screws. Number three, let there be light. I found this perfect LED light to provide a bit more light to the printer and the extruded aluminum makes it very easy to mount the light using two screws. 
Once it's mounted, then I just use a cable ties to secure the cord. What's also nice is the LED has a dimmer switch so you can adjust the brightness. Number four is the Beagle camera. The next upgrade is installing a Beagle webcam camera. The A1 Mini comes with a built-in camera, but my complaint about the camera is it has such a slow frame rate. When I'm monitoring a print on my computer, it's very distracting to see this herky-jerky motion out of the corner of my eye, and I really find it annoying. So the Beagle webcam camera is easy to install the app on your phone and has lots of features including live monitoring and time lapses of your prints. To mount the camera to the extruded aluminum, I designed this 3D printed support and I used this standard mounting brackets designed for the extruded aluminum. Number five, external spool holder. I designed this external spool holder because the original external spool holder that came with the A1 doesn't allow you to remove the filament because the extruded aluminum is in the way. So my design allows you to add and remove spools of filament from the front of the printer. Number six, the French cleat walls and clear doors. Now let's talk about why I added these three printed strips around the extruded aluminum frame. I have a French cleat system for my various woodworking tools and I find this to be a very flexible system. I can move my tools anywhere I want to and I can rearrange them as my tool needs change. I thought, why not do the same to my Bamboo Lab A1 mini frame? I designed the longer pieces in two parts held together with dovetails and I printed them on my X1 carbon printer. For added strength, you could also glue them together with 3D Gloop. I interviewed Andrew, one of the co-founders of 3D Gloop at this year's EARF, and he is a great guy and he has a great small company. These French cleats have a dual purpose. The main purpose is the French cleat system to hold various tool holders, spare parts, etc. But they have a second purpose to act as a child or pet resistant barrier to keep a child or pet from coming into contact with the hot end or build plate and also where a young child could get their hand caught in the moving parts of the printer. Now, this is just a visible boundary, not child proof, because they can still slip their hands in between the cleats and they can also easily open the acrylic doors. Speaking of the doors, I made these from acrylic sheets. Unfortunately, they are a custom size, so I cut them to size on my table saw using an 80 tooth carbide blade, which cuts the acrylic like butter. I 3D printed these spacers for the hinges, and I made these 3D printed drilling gauges to mark where the holes should be drilled in the acrylic for the hinges and the handles, which worked really well. Then I 3D printed this mounting bracket for the magnetic latch, and attached the mating latch plates using 3M double-sided adhesive. Now, if you don't have kids or pets to be concerned about, you really don't need the doors or the French cleats on the back of the aluminum frame. The French cleats are easy to install using these special nuts that rotate inside the aluminum extrusion, so you don't have to take the frame apart to add the French cleats to the extrusion. Number seven is the build plate storage. One of the first things I designed for the French cleat system is this build plate holder. It holds four build plates and it easily mounts to the French cleat strips. It's made of the main holder and a small French cleat that I've attached to the back using screws and threaded inserts. Number eight is this tool holder rack. The next thing I made for this French cleat system is this tool holder that holds some extra hot ends, Allen wrenches, nozzle cleanout tool, an extra nozzle wiper, lubricant, and a couple of filament cutters. I designed this and 3D printed it in four parts, the back, the upper shelf, the lower tray, and the cleat. I attached everything together using screws and threaded inserts. By the way, I really like this threaded insert insertion tool because it aligns the threaded inserts and helps you install them perpendicular to the hole. A link is in the description. Number nine, a scraper with a holder. The next upgrade is a simple scraper that can be used for any 3D printer to remove parts and calibration strips from the build plate. There are many scrapers out there, but what I like about this design is it comes with a lifetime supply of disposable plastic blades. What's nice is the plastic blades won't scratch your build plate and 
you can't get injured using the plastic blades. The link is in the description. Also, I made this simple scraper holder by 3D printing the two parts, attaching them together with screws and threaded inserts, and then inserting a stainless steel pin so that it easily mounts to the French cleat system. I have many more ideas on other tool holders and spare part holders that I will be designing for the A1 French cleat system. So how much does it cost for this inverted AMS light frame system? So for the main commercial parts, such as the aluminum extrusions, corner brackets, cable assembly, and LED light, the cost is approximately $271. If you want to install the optional Beagle camera and the acrylic doors, they would cost approximately an additional $123 for a total of $394. Then you would also have a small additional cost of the plastic for your 3D printed parts. So where can you get the commercial materials and 3D printed STL files or actual 3D printed parts if you wanted to make one of these systems for your A1 printer? I've included links to all of the commercially available parts in the description below. If you are interested in a detailed instruction manual and all of the STL files, I'm setting up my Etsy shop and when the shop is live, there will be a link in the description below. I put many hours into the overall design of this ecosystem, as well as all the various revisions of the 3D printed parts. So I'm asking for your consideration for $10 in exchange for an instruction manual and for all of the STL files of the 3D printed parts. This would really help my channel because I've invested a lot of time and money in all this equipment and materials to make these videos and your support will help me to be able to continue to make more of these types of videos. So even if you prefer not to purchase anything, if you found this video useful, I would have really appreciated if you would hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I also would love to hear from you on your opinion of the system. What do you like and what would you like to see improved on the system? Please provide your comments below. My next video will be my evaluation of the Chidi Tech XMAX 3 3D printer. And when that video is available, that link will be here. In the meantime, you may want to watch my most popular video, which is the top 10 bamboo upgrades for the P1 series X1 carbon printers. And that link is here. Thanks for watching. Bye.